2017 was a stellar year for the National Restoration, Carbon Sequestration, Wildlife and Livelihoods Project. We made many inroads and increased our visibility and impact with not only our project communities and organizations, but at a national level. February 3rd The project partnered with the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries and the Forestry Division to commemorate World Wetlands Day 2017 at the Nariva Field Station in Kurnahan. Wetlands for Disaster Risk Reduction was the international theme for this year's celebrations. The event featured remarks from the Minister of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, the Office for Disaster Preparedness and Management, and the Food and Agricultural Organization. The day was first recognized on February 2, 1971, to raise awareness about the values of wetlands for humanity and the planet. This year, prominence was placed on the storm buffering protection offered by wetlands in Trinidad and Tobago. March 10th In celebration of the International Day of Forests, students from the Beach RC Primary School attended the Fonsamans Reforestation Community Programs, GAYAP, and learned about the different approaches of fire management and trail marking. It was an important learning event as visitors got the opportunity to view reforestation in the hills of the Northern Range, just as we reforest the Nariva wetland. March 21st 220 fruit trees were distributed in eco-friendly tote bags to the project's stakeholders and EMA's staff in commemoration of the International Day of Forests. The trees included local fruits such as West Indian cherry, tamarind, and guava. March 22nd We are concerned about best practice at NRCS WLP and we are determined to measure and evaluate our progress. For the first time, NRCS WLP interviewed over 1,000 persons from the 10 communities that surround the Nerefa Swamp. The project conducted a knowledge, attitude and practices survey to gather information on the residents' knowledge and understanding of the Nariva Swamp and environmental sensitive species. March to May Using a new approach to fire suppression, the project created the first ever Elite Fire Management Unit. The unit consisted of at least three representatives from the community groups and was trained in HSE, knowledge of the swamp, first aid, and was equipped with personal protective equipment. The fire unit faced one major fire in 2017 and successfully suppressed its spread to other areas in the swamp. March to June Six areas in Trinidad and Tobago were surveyed using camera traps during the months of March to June, collecting data on five game species – agouti, deer, lap, tattoo, and quenk. The areas included Shagaramas, the Central Range, the Main Ridge, Matura, Nariva, and the Trinity Hills. The cameras replaced the line transect methods to determine the population distribution and density of game species in Trinidad and Tobago and captured data in rugged terrain on a 24-hour basis. Of significance is the collection of data in the main ridge in Tobago for the first time. June 6th Building awareness around conservation was the central focus when the project partnered with Sandy Communications Limited to host the National Spelling Bee Finals at the Government Campus Plaza in Porto, Spain. This was to commemorate World Environment Day 2017. 17 primary schools participated and Rio Claro Hindu School's Srihan Chakuri emerged the winner. Second place went to Angelo Harrigan of Donruss Private Preparatory School with St. Peter's Private School's Ross Ramkisun taking third spot. July 19th to August 11th 
Enhancing knowledge in biodiversity protection took center stage with NRCS WLP's Environmental Camp Series, the fourth edition. 182 students attended the project's Vacation Environmental Camp Series. This year, camps were held in Beach, Plumitan, Kernahan, and Maruga, and covered topics in climate change, watershed management, marine pollution, microplastics, recycling, endangered marine species, and coral reefs. September 29th, a media management for rural-based organizations workshop exposed 22 participants to new approaches to improve their communications to the public and its members. It was geared at building a good corporate image and supplementing the traditional channels. November 24th, participants benefited from the wealth of information gained from the proposal writing and grant funding workshop held at the Kipak Hotel. Panelists included persons from the corporate, government and international funding agencies as well as successful projects who gave attendees a better insight in securing funding.